Moving past painful emotions. Guys, this is not a long episode. This is actually short and sweet today. We're gonna talk about why peace is so important in the home. Stop trying to lead and make decisions all the time. You should not be proud if you raised your voice and screamed at them. No matter what. No matter what. I'm Cass. I'm Catherine. Why am I allowing him to do this in front of our children? Why am I allowing this to happen at all? You don't get to say whatever you want to a man and push him to the point where he snaps. I might have been a really bad man the other day, but today I went out of my way to be a good man and she thanked me for it. Is that you always want to act in the direction you want to go. So he is just a paycheck. What about his needs? We're moral marriage. Let's flip divorce statistics with the new marriage. All right, guys, episode 46 of the Moral Marriage Podcast. Thank you for listening. If you are, that's because you want to save your marriage. You understand that we came back from the depths of hell. and We're not settling for less than disrupting divorce. If we can, you can. Stop focusing on what you can't and start focusing on what you... <laughs> I said it wrong. Yeah, Stop focusing fine. on what you can and start focusing on what you can't, and you'll end up with the best thing that ever happened to you. All right, moving past painful emotions. Guys, this is not a long episode. This is actually short and sweet today. And I'm going to do that on purpose with you today. I want to just give you a foundation so that you can move past painful emotions. This comes up comments on social media, questions on the podcast form. This comes in with DMs off the, the social media profiles. This comes in on website, text messages, and it comes in. I've only seen a couple of emails, but it has come in. This needs to be a foundational piece, and we can build on this. And actually, it's in the schedule to build on this in a few episodes. Um, because it came up again from one of your clients the other day, honey. But I can't stress how important the foundation of this is. If you don't want to be feeling all the painful emotions, you are responsible for every fucking choice in your life, which is why I say focus on what you can, not what you can. Do you think it was easy for me, who only knew anger his entire life? My parents paid the next two decades of my life. All I knew was how to pick a fight with somebody at work, come home, pick another fight with whoever was dating. Catherine got the worst of it. I destroyed Catherine because by the time I met Catherine, it was so ingrained in me. And I was so, she even asked me if I had an anger problem when we met. And I really literally thought it was everybody else in my life. Do the fucking math. You're the common denominator. And if it's just you and your partner, look at the common, common denomination between the different kinds of fights you have, the different arguments you have. Look at the way you treat your kids and you'll realize it's not just you and your partner. Just stop for a second and realize that. And honestly, take a good look when you've done that and you'll start to realize that if you want to stop living in these painful emotions, if you want to finally move past them, you're going to start to connect the dots. You're, you're failing at work because you're sitting in your pain. Your body does not look the way you want it to look because you're sitting in your pain. Let me give you a couple of examples, and then we'll move to relationship stuff, and then I'll let you jump in, unless you have anything you want to right now. I can wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. Work. I'm sorry, working out, health, okay? You're sitting in your pain. What do I mean by that? Well, maybe you're not complaining about it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have zero interest in bitching about the way that something looks on you. Maybe you don't notice when you're picking your shirt, you know, or whatever. You're sitting in your pain when you decide that I'm going to have this to eat, instead of that, when I'm going to drink this instead of that, when I'm not going to get out of bed and work out because I want to sleep a little bit longer, but then you still need the fucking lights off when you're trying to be intimate with your partner. I'm using that as a specific example because you use that as a marketing hook for a long, long time. It's big for a lot of women, 10 pounds away from having the lights on, you know, and for many of you, it's way further than that. You are responsible for your choices. That is painful. You want to move past the pain? Give yourself some joy by how you feel. In your body, in your own skin, with the energy that you feel from that. Let's talk about work for a second. You might be making seven figures a year. You could probably be making double digits, seven figures a year if you were not sitting in your pain, living in a fog because you're fighting with your spouse, because your kids are screaming at you, not listening to you every single day, because you are not happy. Okay. And with your partner, it's the same thing. Are you afraid to walk in through the door? Oh, no, I don't want another night. I'm walking on eggshells. I can't be myself. This is all staying in your pain. What can you do? Focus on what you can't, not what you can. What you can do right now is walk on eggshells, come home, and wonder if you're going to fight again. What you can do is walk on eggshells wondering if you're allowed to flirt with your partner, make a move. What you can do is avoid the hard conversations because you don't want to fight. 
because even though you feel insecure because your partner didn't respond to your messages today, stop doing what you fucking can. Do what you can. Learn some skills. Pick up a book. How do I communicate through a hard conversation? Watch the last two or three episodes of the podcast right now and then bring some of those. At least reflect. Bring those reflections back to your relationship and try to implement so you can have a hard conversation. Maybe not necessarily about the insecurity that you're having. Why didn't you message me back? Why are you scrolling on your phone? But so that you can start to move forward with a new plan so that you can move past the painful emotions. I'm going to take a break. You'll have you go. Yeah. So I often see women coming into my program completely clouded by the negativity in their life. They are only seeing the negative from their partner. They're completely disregarding the positive from their partner. They feel stuck. There's all these negative emotions. You know, it would be the opposite. You've heard the saying, um, rose, seeing life in rose-colored glasses. That's the opposite of how these women come in. Everything is working against them. Their partner sucks. There's a, he's a terrible person. There's nothing nice that they have to say. And they're just really anti-relationship. Although they, they want to be pro-relationship. This is called negative sentiment override. It's exactly what it sounds like. You are overridden with negative sentiments and you cannot see past it. The opposite of that is called the positive perspective. The positive, the positive perspective is something that the Gottmans reference. It's in the sound relationship house. Come on up then. Come on. The sound relationship is sound relationship house is a bunch of different things that you you a bunch of, of steps that you take in order to have a successful relationship. I'm sure you've heard, go get the book, The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. They describe it in there. And so the positive perspective is a shift in your mindset. The example that I, I've probably used on the podcast before is. Let's say your husband rushes out of the house in the morning and he doesn't give you a kiss. And he usually does. Or maybe it's been a week and he hasn't. You could say, that jerk, he doesn't love me anymore. He doesn't prioritize me. He didn't give me a kiss. I can't believe that asshole. He doesn't value our marriage. And then you let your mind go down this rabbit hole of why your husband is so horrible. That's negative sentiment override. The positive perspective is thinking, oh my goodness, my husband must be so stressed. I wonder if he has a meeting today. I wonder if he was late for work. I wonder if he's worried about snow on the roads. Clearly we live in Canada. Um, I wonder if he's like, you know, he's lost in his own world. Something's going on. I hope my husband is okay. Send him a quick text and say, um, miss you, babe. I hope you have a good day. Don't assume the worst. That's negative sentiment override. You need to purposefully Think about the positive perspective, because if you are in that painful state of, I can't believe my husband just didn't kiss me on his way out, you you allow yourself to sit in that pain. And before you know, that pain multiplies. And so whether it's a painful emotion of something small, like he forgot to kiss you, or it's a painful emotion that, of something that happened, you're in negative sentiment override, all you're seeing is the negative. But if you can start appreciating the positives, I was in negative sentiment override hard when we were in, you know, the thick of our abuse. But as I started to remember, I fell in love with my husband for a lot of different reasons. And when I started to look at that, I started to look at his drive and his ambition. And I had to remind myself that he was handsome because he had turned himself into mm -hmm. someone that was so ugly to me. But I started to be like positive about it. Like he's super fit and he has good hygiene and he takes care of himself. Why, you know, and then I started to see the, the handsomeness come back. And I started to appreciate that he's a really hard worker rather than thinking about, all the negative and whatever I was hurt by because he used to work too much and thinking, well, you know what? Instead of saying he works too much, oh my goodness, he really wants to support the family. This is before we had a family. It was just me. We were the family. But going from negative sentiment override purposefully and intentionally looking at the positive perspective is going to help pull you out of that negative space. And this this brings up so much of what I just had to bite my tongue because I want to jump right in. Like, you know, I would teach men, well, then send a message. You're going to get a big kiss when you get home later and then give her the kiss and then deal with the rejection. If your marriage isn't there right now, do what you can't, not what you can. That's it. Yeah. Right? Otherwise you're not going to grow. You're I love not. this. Do what you can't, not what you can, because it's so counterintuitive. People are going to do what they can. And if you only do what you can do and you never grow, you're not going to change where you are. No, if, guys. And if you don't believe me, think about any hobby you ever had, any sport you love to play, any instrument you want. You do what you're good at which is what you can. But if you want to grow, you want to achieve more, you do what you can. And it's not going to be fun because you got to step outside your comfort zone. In this case, we're talking about things with your partner. They're going to reject you. They're going to push back. They're going to be in negative sentiment override. You, you create opportunities to provide the structure for what you want. If you're listening to this, then you're the one who's in. You're the one who wants more or you wouldn't be listening to it. 
So own that. Jump in, jump on board, and go get your life. But you're going to have to break away from the normal because the normal means I'm a negative sentiment or right. Now I'm going to go talk to people or read social media or watch stupid TV, uh, whatever. Whatever reminds you of your pain and forces you to not only sit in it, but play in your pain, which is what I call doing more of what you can. We all can. We all can. Turn what you can't into what you can, and you will have everything you ever wanted. And I'm not just talking about your marriage. If, if you know anything about us, we're all about the big three, health, wealth, relationship. And so this is all overlapping and stacking. You want one, you can have all three. So if you're listening to this, make it happen. Yeah. All right. It's supposed to be a short one, and it is. See you <laughs> next time. Bye.